on, man. Let me in. Occupado. Is this for one of your dumb videos? Because some of us have to work. Come on. Imagine you're a movie producer with an option on a best-selling character-driven novel featuring a massive threat to a small town. While developing the project, you look for experienced commercial filmmakers that settle on a newcomer with one previously low-budget film to their credit. This newcomer attacks the material with a muscular, distinct style, and while the production is troubled, the film eventually becomes a blockbuster horror thriller and is highly regarded. The filmmaker becomes a superstar overnight. As a producer, how do you follow up a film that's so seminal it becomes part of the pop culture lexicon? Do you make the same thing again, or do you try to make something different? Do you give audiences what they think they want, or do you risk it on something bigger, flashier, that abandons the style and tone of the first film? How do you improve on a masterpiece? In the case of this episode's object of worship, you show the monster. I'm of course talking about Jaws 2. What movie did you think I was talking about? Dude. Dude, I got a piss. Let me in. Released in 1975 and based on Peter Benchley's best-selling book, Jaws completely rewrote the rules for filmmaking. Considered the first blockbuster, Jaws was Steven Spielberg's second film, and production was a complete train wreck. For an excellent look at the making of Jaws, click the link. Jaws established a template for horror thrillers that would be copied for decades to come, wherein the monstrous antagonist is only hinted at for a good chunk of the film. Make no mistake, this was a decision made by circumstance rather than design. Shooting the movie on the ocean created enormous challenges that had never really been attempted before. More challenging was creating an underwater monster that would work reliably in the harsh conditions of the Atlantic Ocean. Because the shark almost never worked during shooting, Spielberg had to get creative and suggest the threat rather than showing it outright, at least until the climax of the film. This shot in particular is one that haunts me even now, with the glowing white belly revealing the size of the threat as it pulls its victim down. Jaws was the most successful film of all time for four years, until Star Wars, and it didn't take long for the producers to approach Spielberg for a sequel. He apparently considered it for a hot minute, and then remembered that making the first film was over a year-long nightmare. Jaws 2 throws out most of the lessons of Jaws immediately, and jettisons the structure of an ever-diminishing cast. Whereas the third act of Jaws is a male bonding adventure with only three characters and a shark, Jaws 2 is an ensemble of a returning Roy Scheider as Martin Brody and a pile of teenagers as Newt. With the release of Black Christmas in 1974, horror movies were becoming more graphic and had a higher body count every year, with Halloween kicking off the slasher genre in 1978. Teens in Peril would immediately make Jaws 2 more youth-oriented rather than the adult drama of Jaws. You know Swark was hired to direct with Jaws 2 as his first big budget Hollywood film. Swark was a talented filmmaker known more for his television work than features, and he made a startling choice following up the most successful film ever. He showed the shark. Jaws 2 immediately jumps from a horror thriller into a monster movie with the camera firmly attached to the dorsal fin of the shark. Let me in, asshole. This doesn't mean that there aren't thrilling and horrifying moments in Jaws 2. It's just that their impact is felt less. Late in the film, his character is trying to save Brody's son from the shark and it's consumed whole. The effect is terrifying as it rises up out of the water, Jaws flexing, and she disappears. So what happens when you make a monster movie as a sequel to a horror movie? Jaws and 2017's It have a lot in common. Like Jaws, Stephen King's It had massive name recognition before the film was released in 2017. It was a best-selling novel and a television miniseries. Like Jaws, It had a modest budget. Jaws was 9 million in 1974, which is about 50 million today, and It was made for 35 million. Both were enormously successful at the box office and with critics, and both had successful but not as well as received sequels. So what happened with It Chapter 2? It was directed by Eddie Machete. And like Spielberg, it was his second film. Like Jaws, it establishes a clear muscular style from the opening scene, and it never lets go. I love the opening sequence in it because it is so very concise and controlled, and established immediately that this filmmaker has a very clear vision for the film. Everything is precise, from the flow of the water, to the movements of the CG boat, to the half shadows and CGI's on Pennywise. Like Jaws, it established the severity of the threat without being overly explicit. Both films open with violence, 
But the violence in Jaws is suggested rather than shown, as we never leave the surface of the water. In it, Pennywise mauls Jar Georgie and then hauls him into the sewer. Both films show reserve with revealing the threat until the last act. Like Jaws 2, It Chapter 2 is a monster movie rather than a horror movie. With a budget of 80 million, It Chapter 2 is in line with Jaws 2's 30 million, which is 118 in today's dollars. Both films have much larger scope in physical production and effects, and neither film is scary. Like Jaws 2, I found much of It 2 extremely unintentionally funny. Jaws 2 has multiple shots where the guts of the mechanical shark can be seen down its gullet, or the mouth just doesn't work. While It Chapter 2 doesn't have similar mechanical issues, the choice to make virtually every threat in the film a gigantic creature results in some truly goofy moments. Perhaps more off-putting is the miscasting of Bill Hader. Famously during the press tour for the film, Hader relentlessly mocked the director and the experience of making the film. Yeah, but he called it, he said Patrick Swayze. Got it. Because he doesn't <laughs> speak English. Yes. And he, yeah, I want you to dance, dance, like dirty dancing, dance like Patrick Swayze. And then he just throws you this thing and you're like, wait, what? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Right, now Bill, uh, uh, dance, dance, get up and dance, like dirty dancing, get up like dirty dancing right now. And I'm like, with Barry, his own work, Hader has established himself as a talented director, but as an actor, his range is li limited even in his own work. It's apparently extremely apparent in It, Chapter 2, and while extremely entertaining, Hader's Ritchie is a constant reminder that this is silly and not to be believed. When a main character has an ironic detachment from the crux of the movie, the audience is given permission to agree with them. One of the biggest complaints about the TV miniseries of It was that the ending was poor. Made in the 1980s, the final form of Pennywise was a stop-motion spider creature It just didn't work and essentially drained the tension out of the climax. It Chapter 2 is extremely aware of this criticism and even features a cameo by Stephen King criticizing the end of the character Bill's book. This tension is even more apparent in the climax where Pennywise takes on even larger and ever more monstrous forms. Given the ending the film was building towards would include a gigantic half-spider Pennywise, it makes sense from a structural perspective to prepare the audience for this shift from the first film by establishing massive monsters earlier. However, the It Chapter 2 was released only two years after It. Audiences still had a fresh memory of Pennywise the Clown in their minds. With Jaws 2, the only way to see Jaws again in the 70s was on network television or in a theatrical re-release. Some audience members would see It for the first time at home on VOD or Blu-ray in mid-2018, about a year before It Chapter 2 would hit theaters. The shift from a human appearing demon clown to a gigantic monster is stark and unexpected. Like Jaws 2, It Chapter 2 is a fun thrill ride adventure movie that tries to establish a satisfying sequel by not doing what the audience would expect. Both films are utter undercut by this choice, accidentally or intentionally, and they eliminate the tension and horror of their first films. <laughs> Fuck. Fucking, I fucking hate you.